So what you are seeing on the screen right now are Roblox visual effects that use 3D models. And in this video I'm going to cover how to make these VFXs with the use of Blender. But as usual, leave a like to support the channel and let's get to it. So once we are in Blender, the first thing we need to do is basically add a mesh, which is going to be the UV sphere. And how we are going to achieve changing the sphere into a previously shown visual effect is by adding a lot of modifiers. But right now we can basically just move the sphere by going to the face select mode, then pressing the right click button and selecting shade smooth. And this step is just going to smooth out our sphere. But let's actually just get the modifiers now. And the first one we are going to need is going to be the... If I just go to the modifiers and press on the add modifier, it's going to be the vertex weight edit. And you can see that this is expecting a vertex group that we currently don't have. And how we make one is simply going to the object data properties and we are going to have the vertex group tab right here. So I can press on the plus button to add a new one and we need to assign all of the vertices from this mesh into this vertex group by simply going to the edit mode, selecting everything and simply pressing on assign. And now if I deselect the sphere and then press on select and this is going to select all of the vertices again, this means that they were assigned properly to the group. And now I can go back to the modifiers. So in the vertex edit now we can select our group and there is going to be few changes that we need to make to the fall off and the influence. Since this is going to be the main modifier that we are going to use to actually customize the effect. One of the things on the fall off is that from the type we just want to invert the fall off by pressing on this button right here. And we want to simply keep it linear because we are going to have values on the weight basically implementing 0 and 1s that are going to work with the next modifier which is going to be the mask that I'm going to add right now. And the mask modifier is under the generate right here. And again we want to select our group. And this is going to completely make this sphere invisible and that's because we also need to add a thing to the vertex weight edit. And that thing is going to be the mask texture. So I can simply just press on new and suddenly the sphere appeared again. But nothing is really going to happen when I change the threshold since right now this is a black image. So I need to actually see the texture and go to the texture tab by pressing on this button right here. And this is the current preview. And if you understand how a mask works, where again it operates on the black and white values, basically meaning that black is invisible and white is visible. So you should probably also understand how this works. But anyways, we don't want to change anything from the settings right here. From the type we just want to select one of the options. And there are different ones like the blend, like the clouds, for example the marble and the wood. Right, where I leave it on wood right now, and go back to the modifier tab, Right now if I change the threshold of this mask modifier, you can see that it's going to make some of the faces basically disappear. And something I just remembered, I should also just go to the edit tab, again select the face selection and press on subdivide. So now our sphere is going to look like this, where now if I increase the threshold, it's going to be a bit more visible. But now I'm just going to go back to the texture, just to show you different modifications that you can do with this. Right, so for example, while having the wood type, we can change the pattern to for example one of the given right here. And this is not really going to work with the ring, so I can maybe select the band noise or the ring noise. But these are basically the presets but later on when you have one of them, you can also change the second basis to for example so, or even the tree. But on some of the presets like the bands, you can really set the size, the turbulence or the nabla. Where if I go to the band noise for example, I am able to actually change them. And this is how you can also modify this pattern. Where you can even have something like this. And this works on all of the other ones like the marble. Here you also have the saw, the scene and the tree. And you also have the type which is soft and hard. But since this one is a little bit more grey, you would have to mess around with the color values. But I'm just going to stick to the wood and I also just realized that it gave me a different randomized pattern. But anyways, going back to the modifiers, if we are on the mask I can also select the smooth option and this is also going to give a different visual effect. But this one is really only smoothing the faces. But for certain use cases it's actually going to work, but if the effect doesn't really satisfy you, we can just deselect this option, lower the threshold a bit again, and just add a new modifier. And this one is just going to be the smooth one under the deform. And for this one the only thing we need to do is just increase the repeat. And we can also select the vertex group for this one as well. And now we can see that it's going to be a little bit different. 
Oh, and I didn't mean to change the factor. But basically, you just want to keep the repeat around basically 10 or 30, or you can even go to the maximum. But this isn't really everything yet, because the last modifier that we need to add is going to be the simple deform right here. And what this one is going to do, this is basically going to deform our mesh like this. And setting the axis on this one is basically dependent on if you, for example, want the effect to move in one specified direction. For example, I could have it rotated like this in the game engine, so I can leave it on the x-axis, but I can also change it to y or even z. And the z one is going to be the best one in my opinion right now. And again, you can basically just mess around with all of these properties. For example, changing the smooth factor if you wanted to. Same with the threshold or even the pattern texture. Where if I change the size, you can see that we have a lot of different effects. So I can be really creative with this one. I can even change it to something like the Stucci, for example, and maybe just change the size. Then I can mess around again with the threshold maybe, and it's going to produce this effect right here. But I'm just going to back to this one, since I think that this one is pretty neat. So yeah, we have one of the objects and you can see that it doesn't really change if we go to the edit mode. And that's because all of the modifiers are applied in the object mode itself. If you wanted to make them visible in the edit mode, you would just select these options to show in the edit mode right here. And I'm showing this just in case because I know that some people might not be really experienced with Blender and they might be in the edit mode and then try to apply some modifiers and it's not going to show. So let's make sure that you are in the object mode from this window right here. But now lastly we can basically just add another sphere and again do it in the object mode by selecting the UV sphere and again making it smooth as well as a little bit smaller. And right now we can basically just export them by selecting both of them, going to file then export and then select FBX. And then I basically just want to select the limit to selected objects and then change the scale from 1.0 to 0.05. And then just simply press on export FBX. And now to actually import them in studio, we just want to press on the import 3D and basically navigate to our file, where after I selected it, I should have both of these spheres right here. But basically, I don't really need to upload this to Roblox, so I can deselect this option and then press on import. And we are going to have the effect with this sphere right here. So you can see that it's pretty great right now, but now I'm going to show you how to basically make this VFX right here. And if I just go to the VFX mesh, the first thing I want to do is anchor it, and then go to both of these parts and deselect the can collide option. Then if I go to the sphere, which I'm actually going to name VFX, and this one to sphere, if I go to the VFX, I can also select the property for it to be double-sided. And you might not always want this option, but with this one I think that is going to go pretty well. But anyways, now we just want to set the material to be neon on both of these objects. And I already have this energy ball as well as a fireball, so maybe this time I'm going to make something that's like, I don't really know, maybe pink. So this is the color on the center part, and now let's go to the VFX. And I can simply just make it a little bit darker than the color of the center part. But that's basically one of the things and as you can see from this example right here, we have more than one color. And that's because I basically duplicated the VFX, named this one VFX2, made it a little bit smaller and simply just rotated it. So I can basically just change the color of it to maybe be a bit lighter. So now I'm going to have this. But if I do a playtest now you can see that all of the other ones are spinning. But this one isn't, and I just have this for a quick little effect where I'm basically just adding the script into the model, and what the script does is basically just play a twin. And this wasn't the proper one, since this was supposed to have two twins. But then I basically just changed this to VFX and VFX2, and simply play the twins in a while loop. So if I do a playtest now, this should actually be spinning like so. And there is a lot more that goes into these VFXs, for example, if this was a ball hitting a target, it will basically just start from the bottom and then for example just keep increasing in size, as it's basically just spinning. So this would just look like something like this, with some other different effects around it. And thinking about it, maybe I should disable the cast shadow property as well. And as you can also see, I was kind of experimenting with stuff. For example, if I just duplicate this, then just go to the sphere and duplicate it as well, as well as increase its size. I was checking if I could do something special if I just change this to be glass. If for example, like two or three transparency. Then I just need to add a highlight and basically just disable it. 
then I can just simply scale the size down. So this is going to be the effect now, except this one is going to have another glass material and it looks pretty, I would say, alright. Maybe I could change it to be something like 1.5, just so the effect isn't too major. But there is also another thing like, if I again just duplicate the sphere, there is also something with the force field material, having for example this outline, where this needs to be put above the glass material, otherwise it's not going to render. So I could for example have it like, maybe that's a little bit too much, because it's kind of interfering with the white part of the effect. But if I were to put it right here, it would be basically above the glass material and in between these two. So now this would be the comparison of the new sphere with all of the effects to the last one. And yeah, I would basically say that it has advantages as well as maybe some of these advantages. Because now, since there is this force field, it's not going to render the neon behind it. Where if I move it out, it actually is. But yeah, you can basically just add something like an impact wave to just make it look a little bit better, as well as different additional stuff that would basically just go well with AVFX. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my Patreon page and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.